Welcome to Garden Plants with Jim Putnam. Let's talk pearls of perfume mock orange. This is Philadelphia's Louisiana Pearls of Perfume. Uh, this is a mock orange cultivar of the native Western mock orange. And uh, the single version of this, the straight species, is the state flower of Idaho. It has amazing, vivid white flowers, pretty long bloomed, you know, typically May into June. This particular variety, Pearls of Perfume, has these incredible double flowers. And they have the same orange scent that you would expect from the uh, straight species, has a very compact habit, and it actually continues to bloom throughout the season. In fact, we had a flower on this right through November of last year. It's in full bloom now here in middle spring, and it just gets going, blooms for a very long time. Most of these spring flowering shrubs tend to bloom out pretty quick. This one has been blooming since before the azaleas here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it's still in, seems like in full flower and the, our evergreen azaleas are long past. It still has tons of buds on it. And then again, after it slows down from this, we continued to have at least some flowers on it all season last year, and it was only half this height. So I'm expecting a lot more this season. Unlike the straight species of Louisiana, these are gonna be sterile flowers. Uh, and again, these doubles are just absolutely amazing. They're so, they're so incredibly showy. The tag on this is gonna say it can be, you know, four feet tall and two or three feet wide. It is supposed to be more compact than the uh, straight species. Straight species can get 10 by 10. And I think that over time, if you didn't prune this, this is exactly what this would do. It's typical of most kind of weeping, cascading, deciduous plants that, you know, flower in the spring uh, like this. Uh, you know, that's the kind of the size they get into. They don't get a whole lot taller than that because they tend to weep and you can kind of see you know, this habit, although it rained yesterday and that some of that is the weight of the uh, water, but it does have this kind of kind of weeping habit like this. Uh, these are hardy in zone four to nine, the straight species. So I have, I'm assuming that this cultivar would be the exact same. So pretty much everybody watching uh, will be able to uh, grow this plant. The one thing about, uh, one thing about this is it's a very new variety. So, or very new cultivar. So it's gonna be a little while probably before there's a lot of availability on it. But if you see one of these at retail, I would absolutely grab one. Pearls of Perfume is gonna be happiest in full sun or part shade. If you put it, it would probably grow, you know, it would probably survive fine in deeper shade and grow, but it would stretch out thin and probably would not bloom as heavily as what you're seeing on this one, which is getting probably eight to 10 hours of direct sun where it's sitting. And it's quite full and quite happy. We'll do a little bit of pruning on it. I'll talk about that uh, later. This is going to be best used as like a specimen plant, which is basically like we're using it just a one of a kind work great in a mixed border screen. So if you, you know, just want to let it grow over whatever it, it wants to grow and never prune it, you could put it in a mixed border and it's absolutely going to get big enough over some period of time to work well in that. Works great in a cottage garden. I would, I would have always considered mock orange as kind of an old fashioned plant, you know, kind of a, a plant that you would see in much older gardens uh, because, you know, a lot of shift has been made toward little, you know, evergreen meatballs and not a lot of these kind of rangy, uh, sorts of, you know, spring flowering uh, fragrant plants like this, but this is absolutely going to make a comeback. It's such a beautiful plant. It's great fragrance, great addition, great architectural habit in the garden. So I really think that this is going to be super popular. This is a very adaptable shrub to most soil conditions. It's not the biggest fan of clay soil. So if you have clay soils like we do, we'll mound things up a bit. This little area next to our driveway actually is mounded up slightly this is like what we would call what we would call our hell strip you know that little piece out by the street that you know you kind of ignore and don't water this plant was planted and never watered again uh and it is it is absolutely thrived over here we've got everything on this side of our driveway has just been literally abused it was put in the ground and we never drag a water hose over here so it's got to be tough if it goes on this side of the driveway the perfect choice for that. Very adapt again, very adaptable to different pHs, different soil types. Very kind of industrial plant. You can plant and forget, and we literally planted it and forgot it. These can be pruned after the heavy spring flowering. So if you need to do any pruning on it, and I don't think I'll have to do any. 
again, when, once this water dr drifts off of here, it's slightly more compact than what you're seeing this morning. Well, you know, I might take six or eight inches of height out of it after it finishes flowering, just to have some of this middle part fill back in a bit. If it's got a crazy limb here or there, you can take that off whenever. But overall, not gonna really need a whole lot of pruning. We fertilize the garden once a year with an organic fertilizer in the spring. We, you know, we keep the weeds away from it, keep it well mulched, keep the, again, even, even moisture. It's kind of perfect for this, not a wet area, not a super dry area, although again, we haven't really drug a water hose over to this and it's done absolutely fantastic. So this is a Southern Living Plant Collection uh, piece. This is Pearls of Perfume Mock Orange. Incredible fragrance, incredible flowers. I really, really love this plant. I think you will too. Thanks for watching.